Welcome to the Mental Fitness Podcast. Today's entrepreneurs are mental athletes that have to know about the mind and how to keep it fit. Our goal is to increase our resilience against stress and anxiety, optimize our productivity, motivation and optimism by learning about the human mind through psychology, neuroscience and human behavior. I'm your host Ozan. I'm a founder who has experienced the challenges of launching and growing a business and a keen student of human behavior over the last 15 years. I'll share with you what I know and learn. Hundreds of impactful, behavior-changing ideas are waiting to be discovered by us. Let's begin now. In our tour of the gym for the mind, we've so far looked at learning and memory and compared that to a cardio training. Then we looked at emotion and perception and compared, likened that to core and balance training. Now it's time to turn our gaze away from the gym for a moment and look at where the real growth happens, AKA the sleep. So I'll share with you some key lessons to come out of Matthew Walker's seminal work, uh, Why We Sleep. It, it was a fantastic book. I, I read it like six months ago and a lot of lessons stuck with me from that. And I thought it was essential reading for any entrepreneur, anyone who's building a business because creative problem solving, thinking um, and analytical skills, decision making, judgment, emotion, regulation. These are all core to success as an entrepreneur and, and these all have to do with sleep. So at the end of uh, at the end of this podcast, I have a list that I have created for you of my favorite ideas and, and lessons to get, get a takeaway from Matthew Walker's book and I'll share them with you. Before we go into that, let's take a step back and try to understand how sleep works and then the similarities of mental and physical growth. So imagine the fact that your muscles are growing when, when you start a routine type of exercise. The interesting thing is uh, your muscles do not actually grow while you're waiting lifts or going for a run. The exercise itself is actually only the stimulant. It is the beginning of the anabolic process uh, that is necessary for growth. Um, it is essentially a signal uh, to the muscle that it needs to grow. So our bodies are incredible machines of adaptation. Uh, they constantly reshape themselves to better, better fit whatever situation they're put in. That reshaping or, 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 or that growth takes place during primarily in sleep. So for example, during this uh, coronavirus lockdown, a lot of countries have experienced experienced a lot of people have lost muscle mass um, very similar is uh, the situation of astronauts in in the ISS so when there isn't any pressure f f for from the environment to use that muscle then that muscle will go into atrophy and it, it also this is actually your body working the way it is supposed to it is optimizing constantly uh, your body your muscles uh, and even your brain as we will see to, to best fit the situation it exactly it is in so the, the the funny thing here and i think there's a key lesson here while we cannot as individuals wish our muscles into growing we can place ourselves in the situations that require that so we can we can create the situations that signal to the muscles that the growth is needed there and your body will do the rest in sleep. During sleep, the body produces the HGH, human growth hormone. And especially in the N3 stage of the NREM, the non-rapid eye movement stage of sleep, blood flow to your muscles increase and tissue growth and repair occurs. So we've talked about the physical growth up until now, but it is more or less the same when it comes to how the brain grows. When we talk about brain growth, we are talking about new synapses being formed between the neurons in your brain. I think the best way to understand this is this. Imagine you're looking at a city at night from a plane 
and you'll see some roads that are very well lit. These are the high roads. They have lots of data capacity. You'll also see some branches, some side roads that are less visible, but they're still noticeable. And then you'll see a few specs, and these are the individual vehicles, cars, or whatever. Uh, so these are not high roads, these are not busy roads, but there is still some activity there. So this is what actually a, a mapping and imaging of the brain looks like. Every connection between each neuron is actually a road. So the, the core principle that is that is important to understand here, and it, it's one of the no, like uh, brain science 101 type of uh, knowledge, neurons that fire together, wire together. So when you put your brain in a situation where it where certain groups of neurons have to fire together just like it happens with muscle growth physical muscle growth your brain during sleep actually modifies increases the neuronal capacity through synapses between those neurons to increase uh, your cognition your perception your speed so uh, bigger data capacity in between those neurons so it's essentially the same mechanism. Uh, you create the conditions that demand a certain type of growth and the body accommodates that during sleep. A key idea here is that not enough rest and recovery with too much exercise would result in injury if you were talking about the physical situation. Now it is very much similar. So talking about burnout in business, is it is essentially exactly the same. Not enough rest, not enough recovery, but constant exertion of effort. It's, it's gonna it's gonna end end with burnout. Um, I think a key way to overcome that is motivating yourself with the right type of rewards, and it depends on the type of individual individual you are really. So a guilty pleasure of mine is actually enjoying cigars and. It, they actually motivate me incredibly well uh, when I'm doing something that's quite difficult to get through. I'm also um, a gamer in a way, so you know, I like multiplayer games. And again, they're, they're, those are my rewards uh, at, at difficult times when I'm finding it really difficult to motivate myself. Another aspect of that is giving yourself the right types of breaks. So work hard, play hard, and rest hard, uh, essentially. Give yourself the right types of breaks during the day, during the week, and during the month. My personal ritual is not work through the weekends and, and try to protect that sacred um, time period for myself as much as I can. And this this was not always the case. Uh, having um, having a lot of ambitions and, and crying, trying wanting to create a lot of st uh, stuff uh, I, I found myself working through the weekends in, in a lot of circum in, in, in at different times, if, uh, at different periods in my life. Uh, but at least for me, it, it, the end result was that in exchange for a short burst in increased activity, I would be sacrificing a longer term performance. And at the end of the day, when I looked at that, uh, result it I was not winning I, w I was actually creating less work than I would so that's why I don't uh, work uh, during the weekends as a protected zone for me uh, I know how important that rest is to me for my productivity during the week time so get to your nurse and you get to know yourself and give yourself these breaks um so Matthew Walker's why we sleep and and the key lessons uh, from there first of all I'd like to mention why this book was really important for me. Um, I'm really interested in understanding human behavior through psychology, sociology, and all the other disciplines. Um, so when, when I came across this book, I was thinking, I'm not necessarily passionate about learning about sleep. I'm not entirely too curious about it, but okay, let's see. But it turns out <laughs> sleep is about everything else other than sleep itself. So sleep is about learning. Sleep is about cognition. Sleep is about problem solving. Sleep is about maturity uh, and emotional stability. Sleep is about physical growth. It, it is actually about 
living longer. So it's, it's this incredible uh, 50% of our lives that we do not necessarily understand, uh, but we, we do that anyways because we have to. Uh, but there is huge, huge room, incredible room, f- room for optimization once you understand what exactly sleep does for your body. So it's, it's a very complex topic. So it is difficult to understand what exactly it does. But still, I think there are some key ideas and now I'm going to share them with you. So let's start with getting the facts straight. The shorter you sleep, the earlier you die. Period. The shorter you sleep, the earlier you die huge reference huge uh huge library of proof proof uh, that is showing that this, this is the case and uh, for every 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 point that i'm going to mention uh feel free to go back to matthew walker's why you sleep and actually acquire that that book it's, it's going to be a good investment for you i promise um essentially sleep is like brushing the teeth uh, for the brain. So d- during the day, lots of neuronal activity and it leaves some kind of a residue. And, and sleep is actually, the uh, it runs the cleaning cycle that, that enables you to function better. So without sleep, you're essentially um, spending time. It is, it is similar to not, wash, uh, not uh, brushing your teeth. And uh, one of these days you'll get a cavity and it's going to hurt and, and you're going to lose your teeth. And what happens is people who are chronically sleep deprived get Alzheimer's uh, much more uh, than people who sleep well. So, so these are the core facts to start with. The second thing, during uh, non-REM sleep, you so, so different stages of sleep, and I will not get into all the details here, but just as a uh, broad perspective on this, there are different stages of, of, of that sleep. So REM sleep, REM sleep, non-REM sleep. Uh, so the, the non-REM sleep is essentially where you gather all the information that you have learned in, in your waking hours. And, and, and try to bring them together. So it is a rough type of processing uh, in a way. In the REM sleep, you integrate these and essentially give meaning to what you've learned and build a perception and understanding of the world around you. So you understand the world better by getting a better sleep. You become a better machine at generating insights and solving problems. The third key idea is you can't really make up for lost sleep. So you either get a full night's sleep and that is seven to nine hours. And and let let me point out something here, which is really important. People who say that they can get by with six or less hours of sleep um, are mistaken in most of the the cases uh, because research shows it is actually less than 1% of the population who can get less than six hours of sleep and do not experience the, the negative effects. So sleep until you can wake up without an alarm clock. Sleep until you can wake up without an alarm clock. And that usually tends to be between seven to nine hours. It is, it is it's like seven hours, 40 minutes, eight hours for me. And that seems to be the golden mark there. Siestas are good. Um, so we, we have a, 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 a sleep uh, schedule that we depend on in the modern world in which we sleep only one time uh, during the day. And this was not always the case. Uh, research shows there are uh, biphasic uh, sleep cycles in which uh, humans have slept throughout the night six or seven hours and then uh, 30 minutes 30 to 30 minutes to an hour of sleep during the day so take advantage of this get siestas whenever you can so the fifth one is is the fact that the rem sleep um, what it does is it it, it, it essentially recalibrates and fine-tunes the emotional circuits of the human brain Um, and to, to refer to why emotional stability is important, go back to the previous es- episode of this podcast, if you have not already listened to that. It's, it's really important. It is actually the number one resource that a founder has to manage to keep going. Um, the sixth one, the sixth idea, is 
Lack of sleep means a heavy, a very heavy hit on your concentration, creativity, problem solving, and decision making. Um, research shows approximately be, uh, being two hours sleep deprived means an approximate 30% decrease in all of these. So imagine you work for eight to 10 hours a day. Uh, a 20% decrease if you worked eight hours a day would be almost two hours, 1.6 hours to be exact, of time lost being unproductive. So it just makes better sense to sleep that and be more productive throughout the day. And I'll, I'll actually cap this with, with uh, some key suggestions to get that better sleep. First of all, uh, you need to be able to function without caffeine <laughs> to start the day off. Um, the best time to drink coffee is around 11 a.m. for me, and I think um, this goes back to an, uh, other types of research. It, once you wake up, your body will naturally produce the hormones to, to, to engage you and, and to get, get you awake. And uh, you will have your rec breakfast or not, but in the first three to four hours, you'll start to see a dip in your performance, and that's the perfect time to actually have that coffee, have that kick, and it also gives you enough time. Uh, so, so the, the the caffeine stays in the body for at least six hours and up to twelve hours for some people. Uh, so, do not drink coffee before six six hours to bed. So that because of that 11 a.m. 12 12 p.m. It seems to be the best time to do that. Um, alcohol suppresses sleep, so do try not to drink and or or make sure that most of the alcohol has left your body before you go to sleep. Um, loss of alcohol consumption means low quality of sleep. Um, try to stay away from LED light sources until at least two hours. Uh, before bed, it's, it's really important. Have a ritual before you go to bed. Uh, mentally relaxing is, is a big part of that. And um, being in the same room, um, like brushing your teeth, reading a book, uh, listening to music, um, revising what needs to be done for the next day, if that's a relaxing activity for you. Uh, but have that ritual, I think it's really important. And uh, another point is, and I think this is mostly overlooked but it's really important the ideal temperature for the human body to be able to sleep is 65 degrees fahrenheit or 18.3 centigrades um, most of us chronically try to sleep in rooms that are too hot and it, it, it makes it difficult to um, get into sleep and to remain in sleep so uh, make sure to actually try to decrease uh, your room temperature by a couple of degrees and you'll see that it helps so going back to the core ideas here, sleep is similar to recovery and nutrition. And just like physical muscles have a growth cycle and what, what we can, what we, what we can't do is wish those muscles into becoming bigger. We can actually create the circumstances that will signal to our body that they should be bigger. Uh, or fitter, or stronger, uh, faster, whatever. Uh, and our body will adapt to that situation. And it is very much like that for the brain and, and we need to give it that room uh, so it can do that self-maintenance routine throughout the night, um, collate what we have learned, uh, put it into memory, the, the, the rough new bits and, fact, bit, bits and pieces of factual information that we have actually integrated and uh, bring together insights about actually how the world works so we are not machines that are filled with factual countless bits and bits and, bits and pieces of information but we actually have a coherent understanding of these so this is just some of the things sleep does for you i hope this episode has been a useful reminder and the importance of sleep, especially for entrepreneurs, creative people, people who are doing mentally challenging, problem-solving tasks. Um, take care, of, take care of your sleep. Take care of yourself, uh, and I'll see you and talk to you in the next one.